Hello everyone, uh, welcome again. We will continue uh, with income tax, but however, before we move to our employment income portion, uh, let's do some questions. Uh, in this video, we are going to look at uh, a comprehensive example, which is part of uh, income tax. Now, although it is a comprehensive in example of income tax, it will examine each and every bit we have studied in chapter number one. Uh, but uh, uh, examiner won't examine this, uh, this, uh, this topic in this much details because uh, I've just made an example which is a comprehensive example. I've uh, included almost everything which we have studied in this topic. Uh, this is just a practice example. So uh, if you can get the example like this in an exam, that will, I mean, you will be lucky enough because uh, it's just an easy mark, it's easy example, all right? Now, could you please move to page number five uh, of your lecture notes? And just after the just just after the two examples which we have seen in the previous lecture, please come to page number five now. Now it is a, a comprehensive example. I've made the income tax pro forma on the board, as you can see. A very left side is details, and then we can divide the income into three sections: non-saving, savings, and dividends. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, when uh, on the detail side, on the very left side here, we will just list down all the sources of income and then we will put the figures in one of these columns. We've already seen in the uh, in first lecture. All right. Now, let's read the question on uh, page number five, please. I won't be sharing the screen at this time because if I share the screen, you won't be able to see me uh, doing this stuff on the board. All right. So please make sure you download the lecture notes and uh, come to page number five of the lecture notes. Now, in this uh, example, it says uh, client name is Ali. So, uh, Ali had the following income and expenses during tax year 1617. Now, this is our current tax year, which is 1617. Now, that's why I made the uh, income tax performance. On the top, what I what I did what did I write? Uh, Mr. Ali. So, it's client name. Then after that, income tax computation, and uh, then we'll have to write down which for which tax year it is. Uh, for so for the tax year. 1617. So if you can't read uh, if you can't uh, read it, I'm just reading it out to you so that you can write it down on your notebook. So Mr. Ali, then we will write down income tax computation and then we will write we'll have to write down the tax year for which we are making this income tax computation. So it is tax year 1617. And after that we will have to write down details on the very left side where we will put the income sources and then we will have to write down non saving savings in income and uh, savings in dividends sorry so we'll put the figures in one of these columns so let's read the question so uh, he has some income uh, so first income is employment income so he was doing some job and he had some employment income of 80000 pounds so his salary is 80000 pounds so let's go ahead and put the uh, employment income in our, into our income tax pro forma so let's go ahead and put employment income so this is employment, employment income. And employment income is of 80,000 pounds. All right. Uh, then there is bank interest. So let's go ahead and put bank interest as well. That is bank interest. So bank interest, we will have to put it exactly the same amount which is given in the question, so we don't need to do anything with it. It is received gross, so we'll go ahead and put this one into our savings income, which is £20,000. So £20,000 will go into our savings income. Uh, next source of income is dividends, so let's go ahead and put dividends as well. So dividends. So dividends will go into the dividends and these are £10,000. Again, we don't need to do anything with the dividends. We will put the exact same amount which we see in the question. Next one is income from discretionary trust. So income from discretionary trust. Income from discretionary trust. Now, income from discretionary trust and income from interest in possession trust is always received net. But the tax paid on these are different. Uh, for income from discretionary trust, tax paid is 45%, whereas interest in possession trust, tax paid is 20%. So, uh, let's put the in income from discretionary trust. We'll have to write down the gross amount here, so we'll need to gross it up. Uh, 
This amount is net, so it was received net of tax, net of 45% tax. So in order to gross it up, we need to multiply it by 100 and divide it by 55. And the total would be uh, 10,000 pounds. Right, so it will, uh, it will go into the non-savings income. Then is interest uh, income from life tenant trust. So it is interest in possession trust. So we'll write that down as well. So income from uh, interest in possession trust. Interest in possession trust. I'll just write it down in the short form. Uh, so it, income from interest in possession trust. And that is paid out of non-savings income. Now why did he tell us that? Because uh, I told you that when we receive the income from interest in possession trust, uh, it will be it will go in one of these columns, but it will tell us in the question. So this was paid out of if it is paid out of non-savings income, then it will go to the non-savings. If it is paid out of uh, paid out of uh, savings or dividends, then it will go into the respective columns. All right. So it tells us in the question that it is paid out of non-savings income, so it will go into the non-savings income. But in every case, even if it is paid out of dividends, savings or non-savings, in every case, tax paid is 20%. So we need to gross it up by multiplying by 100 and divided by 80. All right. So uh, it was 4,000 pounds. So 4,000 pounds multiplied by 100 and divided by 80. So this figure will be uh, 5,000 pounds. That, that is 5,000 pounds for... Uh, in, in interest in possession trust and it is paid out of uh, non-savings income all right now next uh, source of income is child benefit <coughs> now child benefit could you please tell me that why uh, I have given you child benefit in the question Now the reason I have given you the child benefit uh, in the question because I want you to tell me that whether there will be child benefit charge or not and likewise say for example if this question was made up uh, made by the examiner uh, why did examiner give you the child benefit so child benefit is an income source but shall we put this child benefit here what do you say no there is no need to put the child benefit here the reason I have given you child benefit in the question because I want you to uh, tell me that whether he will be, I mean, whether, will, uh, whether Mr. Ali uh, have to pay um, child benefit charge or not. So that is the reason I have given you child benefit. All right. Although child benefit is an income source, but it won't be, it won't go here because it is exempt income anyway. We have seen it. All right. Now he <coughs> he is getting seven thousand pounds worth of child benefit. Uh, now we will see that whether he have to pay child benefit charge or not in a minute all right <coughs> excuse me now let's go to the expenses before we move to expenses let's total this figure so <coughs> 80 90 95 20 thousand pounds here and 10 thousand pounds in this one <coughs> if I want to make the total of this one, so it will be how much? 125,000? 125,000 pounds. So that will be, say for example, I would write down as total. So that will be column of total. Alright, so that is 125,000 total. That is total income. Alright, now next thing is to deduct the expenses less the first expense is uh, interest paid on loan for partnership now i told you that uh, this is qualifying interest now if you take the loan and you use loan for some of the specific reasons uh, then that interest paid on that loan is a qualifying interest we can uh, deduct that interest out of our income now one of the reasons one of the specific reason was to put that money put that money of the loan into partnership all right, so he took the loan and put that into the partnership. The interest paid on that loan is a qualifying interest. So let's go ahead and deduct this one out of this. So less uh, qualifying interest. And that is, in our case, how much? <coughs> 12,000 pounds. And for preference to deduct qualifying interest is first from non-savings income and if there still remains anything, then we'll deduct it out of the savings 
and still if there is anything left then we'll deduct it out of the dividends but we've used all of it uh, from the non-savings income anyway so no need to go any further so it will come to uh, 73,000 pounds and uh, sorry 83,000 pounds 83,000 pounds now please make sure you do this calculation because I might do some mistakes I'm not very good on calculations please make sure you check the calculations if there is any mistake you rectify it now total of that will be how much 83, 93, 313. So it will be 113,000 pounds total. Now this figure is net income, and that is net income before personal allowance. <coughs> net income before personal allowance. Now when you see this figure, net figure, uh, net uh, income before personal allowance, uh, do you remember anything from this figure? Do we have to do anything with this figure? I think there is a formula where we, will, where we have to use this figure, I mean this total figure, which is a net income before personal allowance. Do you remember that which formula uh, where we have to use this, uh, this figure, 113,000 pounds, which is net income before personal allowance? Do you remember? Now we will have to use this in calculating the adjusted net income. Now adjusted net income, the formula to calculate the adjusted net income was net income before personal allowance less gross amount of personal pension contribution all right so net income before personal allowance uh, less gross amount of personal pension contribution now why we need that just net income there are a few reasons the first reason is in order to see whether he will have to pay child benefit charge or not whether he will have to pay child benefit charge or not it depends on how much his net uh, adjusted net income is isn't it now if his adjusted net income is over 50,000 pounds then every 100 pound in excess of 50,000 pounds has got 1% charge uh, of child benefit all right now if his income is in excess of 60,000 pounds income means adjusted net income if his adjusted net in income is in excess of 60,000 pounds then all of the amount received in the child benefit will have to be paid back to HMRC in shape of child benefit charge. All right. So now we need to calculate the adjusted net income. So let's go ahead and calculate the adjusted net income. So I'll just write down adjusted net income. All right. So that is adjusted net income. The formula to calculate adjusted net income is to take the net income before personal allowance. So take the net income, net income, that is obviously before personal allowance or after qualifying interest, that is net income before personal allowance. What we have to deduct is a gross amount of a gross personal pension contribution. Now gross personal pension contribution, is it given to us in the question? let's read the question it says in the question that uh, he has paid a uh, 16,000 pounds worth of pension but that is net amount so we need to gross it up now one of the benefits of personal pension contribution was that we only pay 80 percent into our pension uh, other 20 percent is paid by HMRC what we get in the pension is 100 percent all right so likewise what, what we do is we need to gross it up so we'll take 16,000 pounds multiplied by 100 divided by 80 that comes to 20,000 pounds that will be deducted out of our uh, personal uh, out of our net income before personal allowance which is 113,000 pounds in our case so 113,000 pounds less gross amount of personal pension contribution so that is the amount which is uh, said to be uh, which is our adjusted net income adjusted net income now his adjusted net income is how much 93,000 pounds now because his adjusted net income is in excess of 60,000 pounds so all of the amount which he has received in shape of uh, child benefit will be paid back to HMRC uh, in, in shape of uh, child benefit charge all right but we will see later when we finish the question at the end we will need to do that all right but for now we'll continue with the question next thing to do in the in our income tax pro forma is to deduct the personal allowance so let's go ahead and deduct the personal allowance so shall we that is personal allowance 
Now, in order to calculate the personal allowance, we need to do some workings. So I'll just write down working number one. And guess what? This is our working one. Now, how is it our working one? How this figure going to help us calculate our personal allowance? You remember something called a reduced personal allowance? Now, everyone is eligible for standard personal allowance, which is 11,000 pounds. But uh, some people get reduced personal allowance, some rich people. Now, how would we re determine that someone is rich? If adjusted net income is in excess of 100,000 pounds, then uh, they will get the reduced personal allowance. All right. Now, let's see that if his adjusted net income is in excess of uh, 100,000 pounds or not. If his adjusted net income is in excess of 100,000 uh, pounds, then we need to uh, reduce his personal allowance. Now, we'll take the net income and we'll deduct the gross amount of personal pension contribution. Now, we did that calculation already. So that is his adjusted net income. So his, in, his adjusted net income is uh, 93,000 pounds, which is less than 100,000 pounds. So he will get the full personal allowance. So let's go ahead and deduct this one, 11,000 pounds out of this one. Now, please make sure you write down here. I won't write. Please make sure you write down. Uh, please write down a phrase here. Because uh, Mr. Ali's, uh, because Mr. Ali's adjusted net income is less than hundred thousand pounds, he will be eligible for full personal allowance of eleven thousand pounds. Because Mr. Ali's adjusted net, net income is in excess, uh, is less than sorry, is less than hundred thousand pounds, so he will be eligible for uh, full personal allowance of eleven thousand pounds. All right. Now, after deducting the personal allowance, let's continue with the question. So we will deduct the personal allowance. Uh, it will come to 72,000 pounds, if I'm not wrong. 20,000 pounds, the same amount here. 10,000 pounds and uh, 72, 82, 92, 102. 102,000 pounds. Now that 102,000 pounds is our taxable income. That is our taxable income. Taxable income. Now could you please tell me that what was the benefit of personal pension contribution? Now one benefit of personal pension contribution was that we only pay 80% into our pension. Other 20% is paid by HMRC. So what we get in our pension eventually is 100%. So he, in Mr. Ali's case, he only paid 16,000 pounds, but with what he got is 20,000 pounds in his pension. That is one benefit. Other benefit of personal pension contribution is that it will help us reduce our adjusted net income and it will help us get full personal allowance. All right, are you with me? Now, what happens is that if, say, for example, he would not have spent this amount in his personal pension contribution, then our personal allowance would be less than that because our adjusted net income would have been this much, all right? Say, for example, there was no personal pension contribution, then there, was been, there would have been zero here and the net amount would have been the, exactly the same thing, 113,000 pounds. Now, because adjusted net income was in excess of 100,000 pounds, so he would have got less personal allowance, so he will have to pay more tax, all right? Now, that is another benefit. One benefit is 20% will be paid by HMRC, we only pay, need to pay 80%. Another benefit, that, uh, another benefit is that uh, um, uh, it will help us get full personal allowance, all right? Now that is benefit number two. Now benefit number three is that uh, this gross amount which we are getting, 20,000 pounds, now this gross amount it will be added in our basic rate band and the higher rate band. So our basic rate band and higher rate band of tax will be extended by the gross amount of personal pension contribution. All right. So say for, say for example, in our case, our basic rate band will be 32,000 pounds. So it will not be normal 32,000 pounds. So 32,000 pounds plus the gross amount of personal pension contribution, which is 20,000 pounds. So 32,000, 42,000, 52,000. So our basic rate band is 52,000 pounds. Likewise, our uh, higher rate band will also be extended. So it will not be the normal uh, a higher rate band, it will be uh, extended one. Uh, this 20,000 pounds will be added in our high, higher rate band as well. So we'll have to pay less tax. That is another benefit. Now let's calculate the tax liability. So 
a calculation of income tax liability income tax liability <clears throat> so that is the calculation of income tax liability so first of all what we need to do is 52,000 pounds because we our uh, our basic rate band is extended so 52,000 pounds into 20 <clears> percent <throat> please make sure you do, do this calculation why 52,000 pounds that is 32,000 pounds standard plus 20,000 pounds gross pension contribution is equal to 52,000 pounds all right so 52,000 pounds uh, multiplied by 20 percent now the remaining one which is uh, 20,000 pounds more I think uh, remaining 20,000 pounds we will have to pay at the rate of 40 percent why because we are in the higher rate band now all right so 52,000 pounds out of 72,000 pounds is taxed at the rate of 20 percent uh, as the remaining 20,000 pounds here will be taxed at the higher rate uh, of 40 percent now if we come to tax the savings income now because we are in the higher rate band we will get 500 pounds worth of nil rate band so 500 pounds at the rate of zero percent there will be no tax the remaining 19,500 the remaining 19,500 will be at the rate of 40 percent because we are in the higher rate band all right now let's come to the dividends how to calculate the tax on the dividends because we are uh, i mean because we are going to tax the dividends now dividends in in the dividends case we will always get the nil rate band of 5000 pounds uh, even if we are in the high rate band basic rate band or the additional rate band all right so let's go ahead and uh, tax this amount so 5000 pounds worth of nil rate band for dividends 5000 at the rate of 0% is equal to 0 the remaining 5000 pounds of the dividends will be paid uh, at the rate of 7.5% now where did i get this 7.5% now this will be given to you in the exam this table but you can check this uh, on first page of your lecture notes uh, as well i have given you the table but uh, this these percentage will be given to you in the exam hall anyway first few pages of the exam paper will consist on the tax tables and you will get this percentage there all right now please make sure you do these calculations and make up the total of this now assuming whatever the figure is here uh, i will just mark it as x double x so that is our total income tax liability total tax liability i would write it down total tax liability all right now we will have to reduce this liability uh, by the some uh, by some tax reducers you remember from previous lectures tax reducers now let's go ahead and read the question now he invested some amount in vct eis and seis so whatever amount he has invested there will be specific percentage of the investment and this liability will be reduced by that percentage all right so let's go ahead and read first of all investment in venture capital trust so less tax reducers first of all investment in vct that is venture capital trust and how much has he invested he has invested uh, in vct 20000 pounds so 20000 pounds is equal to 30% that comes to how much uh, 6000 pounds 6000 pounds next one is investment in eis he has also put some money in eis investment in eis and that is how much uh, 10000 pounds into 30 percent again that will come to three thousand pounds and the last one is investment in seis investment in seed enterprise investment scheme and he has invested six thousand pounds in this scheme so six thousand pounds and but the percentage of uh, tax reducer in this case is fifty percent so what we get is three thousand pounds in this case as well if we make the total it will come to twelve thousand pounds so the income tax liability will be reduced by 12,000 pounds worth of tax reducers. All right.
Now after deducting that, say for example there were two x's here and there is one x here. Now please make sure you do these figures, you do these computations, whatever figure you come up here then you will have to reduce that income tax liability by these figures. I'm just making the assumption that it is x. All right. Now say for example this figure is x. Now this will also be reduced by a tax deducted at source. Less tax deducted at source. Underline this one because uh, whatever tax has already been deducted and uh, we will have to deduct it here because uh, while putting the figures here we have always uh, made sure that uh, we put the gross figure here, gross up figures like this one uh, we only received 5500 because 4500 pounds worth of tax has already been deducted but in final figure we have given it gross amount 10,000 pounds alright so let's go ahead and uh, tax uh, deduct the tax deducted source so it will be income income from discretionary trust it is 10,000 pounds multiplied by 45% was tax so it will come to 4,500 pounds another way to do is 10,000 less 5,500 is equal to 4,500 pounds alright the next thing is to deduct uh, income from interest in possession trust this one because 5,000 less 4,000 is equal to 1,000 so income from interest in possession trust I'll just write it down as short form so interest in possession trust and that is how much 5,000 pounds into 20 percent that comes to 1,000 pounds the total of that it comes to 5,500 pounds so 5,500 pounds now whatever the total figure is here assuming it is Y assuming this one is Y this is the final amount which we have to pay to HMRC this is Y figure now this is the amount which we are going to pay to HMRC and that figure is called income tax payable that is income tax payable now please make sure that whenever you see the question in exam hall try to identify this specific words this is income tax payable sometimes examiner asks you to calculate income tax payable sometimes examiner asks you to calculate income tax liability sometimes examiner uh, may ask you to calculate a uh, taxable income so I mean these are different figures so whatever figure examiner asks you to calculate please make sure you do calculate that figure all right because say for example if examiner asks you to calculate just a uh, taxable income now doing these calculations after that calculating tax liability in all this figure it is useless to calculate because examiner is not asking you to do that you are just wasting your time all right so that is income tax payable now before we go to pay this amount to HMRC what we need to pay on top of that is child benefit charge all right so we will add this one here so that is child benefit sorry child benefit charge so that was how much seven thousand pounds I think so the whole amount of child benefit will be paid back to HMRC in shape of child benefit charge so we will pay this amount as well that is seven thousand pounds now whatever the total is say for example it is um, I don't know say for example if it is seventeen thousand pounds now this is the amount which will be paid to HMRC now this is <coughs> inclusive of <coughs> excuse me <coughs> now this figure is inclusive of child benefit charge as well so it includes child benefit charge and income tax payable to HMRC all right now we'll just move on one side please make sure you note it down everything I've written on the board <clears throat> I assume that you have uh, noted it down uh, so that is it and that was our comprehensive example so in the next video we will continue with our income tax journey and we will look at some additional things like in uh, employment income alright so that's it for now and I will see you in the next video thank you and goodbye